The question we're looking at is a question on terminology. Which one contains more thermal energy, an iceberg or a match? And conversely, which one is at a higher temperature? And what does all this mean? So before we start, let's get organized with our terms. We've got thermal energy and temperature. Let's compare the two. Let's start with temperature, since that's something we're more familiar with. When we talk about temperature, we talk about hot things and cold things. And everybody knows that things that are hotter have a higher temperature and things that are colder at a lower temperature. But what it's actually telling us is about the motion of the particles. And what temperature shows us is the average kinetic energy of each of the particles. And it looks something like this. Now, how do we take an average? Well, just like in your math class, you simply sum up all the individual kinetic energies of all the molecules involved, all the particles involved in the match, and all the particles involved in the iceberg, and you divide it by the total number n of the molecules. So we get a basic equation that says temperature is the sum of all the kinetic energies of all the molecules divided by the total number of molecules n. Now with thermal energy, we don't worry about averages. All we worry about is the total amount of internal energy that an object or a mass has. Now it can have internal energy because of the motion of the molecules called kinetic energy. And it can also have internal energy due to some potential energy, some electrostatic potential energy as these molecules attract and repel each other inside the actual objects. So it's the total internal energy and it primarily consists of kinetic energy. Now because we're talking about energy, we're going to measure internal energy in terms of joules. Temperature has a unique unit and it'll be either measured in Celsius or Kelvin for the physics courses that we're doing. Now let's get back to our thermal energy one more time and get an equation. What we're going to do is sum up all the individual energies of all the molecules in the actual object. So we're going to sum from 1 to n, n being the total number of molecules, of all the individual energies. So the individual energies are the potential and the kinetic energies of each particle. So we're going to sum up from I equals 1 to n all the individual energies. Now the formula itself isn't really that important, it's the concept. All the molecules matter and they're all contributing towards the total thermal energy. What contains more thermal energy, an iceberg or a match? Well, an iceberg has many, many, many more particles than a match does. So even though the particles are barely moving and barely vibrating because they're very, very cold, they have very little kinetic energy, there's so many of them that it has a much, much higher thermal energy overall than a match does, where there's very few particles. So which has more thermal energy? The iceberg. And now that we understand the definition of temperature, which has a higher temperature, clearly the match, we know it's hotter, and the reason is, is that on average, the kinetic energy of its molecules are way, way higher than that of the iceberg. One more thing to think about when talking about thermal energy. Imagine I take my match, which is at a high temperature, and placed it underneath one of the icebergs and tried to melt the iceberg with the single match. Clearly my picture right now is out of scale. My match is much, much smaller than the iceberg, even though it's way hotter. If I shrink my match down, shrink it down, shrink it down, and try and melt my iceberg, it becomes pretty obvious why this wouldn't work. There's simply not enough energy, not enough molecular collisions going on to actually change the structure of that iceberg when all is said and done. In fact, it's kind of like this golf example that I pulled up. Here you see a fairly large crowd watching somebody putt. Um, golf crowds are generally pretty mellow, so everybody's just sort of standing around watching the putt, barely moving. This would be like the iceberg situation. And if a few people in the back row tried to get to the front by pushing and jumping around, I would doubt the front people would even notice it. They would absorb the energy very, very quickly because there's just simply not enough bodies with that higher kinetic energy to actually make an impact. Kind of like the match trying to melt the iceberg.